Welcome back to Test Your Chess. I am GM Jesse Cry, and the idea of this series is not just so that you can test your calculation and intuition against other players, but also to enlarge your sense of what is possible in chess. And that's what a lot of these positions that we're going to be doing today will do, hopefully, for you. We're looking at the game's four positions from games that Kasparov played after he became Kasparov. So when he's like 12 and 13 after the name change from Garik Weinstein to Garry Kasparov as we know him today. And that change of course happened because many of the people around him felt that Weinstein sounded too Jewish. What we have over here is a picture uh, from the first game, this was a great tradition that the Soviets had where the top players had to play clock simuls against the youth. So this is uh, Korshnoi as white against Kasparov as black, and let's get into it. Okay, so here we have our first position, and uh, it's getting late in the game. Gary's just played c4, and Victor's played knight f4, black to move. All right, um, this is an interesting position where uh, I think it's an example of where Gary was a little bit too clever. Um, let's just say a, a more experienced Gary, I think, would say to himself, look, my rook on e8 is passive and the rook on f7 is active. So the simplest way to end the game is rook f8. And just on a conceptual level, what's going to happen is not only is white going to lose the b-pawn, but uh, the king is going to be stretched between the two passed pawns, the c-pawn and the f-pawn. And of course, the bishop will simply be much stronger. If you imagine, say, rook takes, king takes, there's really actually nothing to do. In the game, Gary made things complicated. And here, rook f5 is interesting, but even here... Uh, he is better, but not winning, and uh, he went on to draw this game. Great game, by the way, and one of the things I want to say about Gary's young chess is that, and something really important, I think, for everybody to realize, no matter where they are in their own chess abilities, is Gary's tactical vision comes from, in large part, studying certain structures and openings. And I am usually not the person to advocate for opening study, but what we really see in Gary's games, especially in the Sicilian, and here this was a King's Indian, that um, his development of his intuition in those positions really led him to some remarkably beautiful decisions. And we're gonna look at another King's Indian game right now. All right, so here we have our second position, and white has just played b takes c5. Remember, take your time, use as much as a half an hour, and only come see the answer, <laughs> in quotes, uh, when you feel like you really see it. Okay, now this position is really interesting in that the following combination, I'm going to guess, Gary saw when he played c5 itself. But since white could do other things after c5, I wanted to start from this position. And um, this is really remarkably deep. And like I said before, I think it comes from an understanding of the dynamics of the King's Indian structure. Okay, so knight takes e4, and it's first important to see that the knight can't move because of the rook. In fact, that will be a theme throughout here. So, pawn takes, queen h4 check. By the way, this knight takes e4, this is the only move that black can even hold equality, and this is a dirty trick of a trap that Laputian falls into. Um, what he, if he had seen the, the trick that Kasparov had here, what he would have played is bishop f2, bishop c3, bishop h4, takes, takes, rook takes, and dc5 with, let's call it, a count of balanced position. Uh, really fascinating, but... Um, 
Laputian plate g3, and that's the move of an ambitious person who's missing a trick. And I would say give yourself a full point if you saw the following variation. Rook takes, king takes, and now the very nice rook b2. And I do believe that Gary saw this when he played c5 uh, many moves ago on move 15. And the, we're going to look at what happens uh, if he just takes the queen. But the beauty is that we're knocking the uh, queen from the defense of the bishop. And a lot of these king's Indian positions, if you win the dark squares like this, it's just absolutely over. And if you go to any of these light squares, we're going to come in with a bishop check. And also f1, same thing. So you're going to need to go to king e1. And then the easiest way is just snip and queen takes e4. And the game is over. All right, let's head to position number three. All right, so here we have our third position against Evgeny Pugusov. And black has just played queen e7. White to move. All right, this position is a little bit similar to the Kanzler game that I showed in the last video when Gary, I believe, was 11 when he was still Weinstein. And... Um, it's similar in the sense that white really has a French-like a French -like structure and it's going to be hard for black to bring his defensive resources back toward the king. And that encourages Gary to find this move, rook f6, which isn't simply a rook sack on this move, but it's really going to sit there. And the claim is going to be that it can never be taken. Uh, in the game, black played knight g5, but... A nice variation would have been queen f8, queen f2, threatening queen f5, knight g5, snip, queen f5, queen takes, and this is going to fall apart because we're threatening things like e6, and if, like for example, queen g7, we're going to break everything apart with e6, or if rook c6, a nice variation is bishop takes g6 with the point that you can't even get out of dodge with rook f6 because some kind of check is happening and then a mate is happening. So another brilliant win, but let me finish and show the game. By the way, I link, I'm going to give a link to all of the games with a little bit of analysis in the description below. Rook takes, pawn, snip. And any time you take, there's going to be a mate. So king g8. And um, black played queen a3, which is clearly a sign of desperation. But there's nothing left to do here, really. Queen d8, check. Uh, queen g8. And the king will get mated, for example, rook c3, and now queen h4. And there's no hide, hiding place for the king. So a very nice win. And now let's look at position number four. All right, welcome to our final position of the day. Black has just played rook b4. And um, I guess I'd like to introduce the position a little bit by saying, you might have guessed that this comes from a Sicilian. And like I said before about openings, Kasparov really got good, I think, with the tactical stuff by analyzing these kinds of middle games in depth. Now, of course, he couldn't have had this position, you know, in his analysis or anything like that, but he got good at uh, finding the secrets of this type of position. So, uh, well, let me leave it there and then we'll come back. So, uh, the first thing to see is that rook f6 is not so hot because there is going to be a problem on the back rank. Kind of, oh, excuse me. Like first let's play rook b1 and it's just very unpleasant. And then all of a sudden things have gone dramatically wrong. Even you can win the queen, but you're gonna lose the game on f1. So the correct move is e5. And this is uh, not only correct, but it's very much an intuitive decision. Um, a lot of beautiful things going on. If f5, then knight d6 looks very strong with an opening up of the long diagonal if he takes. 
And remember that queen on the long diagonal. She plays our interesting, there's an interesting mistake later in the game. So e5, f takes, and now, um, interestingly, uh, Kasparov's trainer says that knight e5. Nikitin wrote a book about the time together that came out in the 90s about this, and he is not looking at it with a computer and just says, well, this is going to be great because you're going to play, let's say, rook d4 and knight f3, and, and white's definitely either winning or much better. And that's all true, but let's look at the move Kasparov played. To me, it's a very beautiful move and indicative of a lot of the end attacking ideas that Kasparov will later use. Often in the later games we're going to see a file splitting the board in two. Often, for example, the D file splitting the king side from the queen side. And here, of course, it's even more dramatic because white has another file boxing the king in on both sides. So let's take a look. Bishop D7 and the, the terrible thing about bishop d7 is rook a6, and really all of white's pieces are now involved. So um, to me, this is already justifying queen d1, just that we get that rook on a6. Black played h4, and I think white could have played many things here, but the very calm h3, why not, right? Black it doesn't actually have any good moves to do right now. All right, rook g8. Now, let me just talk about rook f8, which is what Nikitin couldn't find an answer to in his own human analysis. And um, I think it's correct, though, to believe that you'll find something here. And I'm sure that was what Kasparov felt, at least during the game. So if we imagine here, rook b8, check. And I'm sure he looked at this, uh, what the computer finds. And I really don't think you have to see this part of it to say that you got the answer right, because you just need to trust that you would eventually find something really in this position. What the computer finds is snip, queen f3, bishop's got to go here, queen f7, and the threat of queen g8 means that it's really completely all the way over. Okay, so let's look at what happens in the game. Rook a6. Rook g8, snip, beautiful move. He cannot take back, so he runs. We win another pawn, and the position's wide open. But rook c4, and it looks like maybe black's kind of sort of in it. But Kasparov has this in store. Queen d5, bishop c4, rook g3. Check, check, king e8. And uh, bishop f7, bishop e6, and here, this is the 39th move, so I'm assuming that we're in pretty serious time pressure. Kasparov played queen a1, and I gotta think that it was mostly on beauty points that he played this move. And after this, white could have, or black could have squirmed out, um, but the it's clear that this is, you know, such a beautiful thing to be moving d1 to all the way to a8 and a1. So, uh, you know, what the machine finds is that this is much stronger. And part of the drama there is, let's say, bishop c6, king here. There's no time to play rook g2 because the queen is, in fact, hanging herself over here. So, really interesting uh game. You can see the finish of it uh, in the description below. And please subscribe and please write how you did if you decided to do this as a test. Um, you'll be able to see the answers of other people, not only for this test, but for the one we did before. And what we'll soon be doing is getting a, a tabulation of all the tests combined. And that will give us a better sense of, you know, the actual test. And it'll be more than one, many positions. And that way you'll get a broader, let's call it, data set. All right. Till the next time. Bye-bye.